not all plants in the forest will grow at the same speed. So too, not all children will learn at the same pace. Hence, I extend myself for those who crave knowledge. Good evening and welcome to Mr. Wilson's CSEC Biology HSB Live. It's another Friday evening and we are here to share right across the Caribbean that bit which we know so that we will have more powerful persons than I am. Again, good evening, Jawawan. Good evening, Macmillan. Good evening, Cooper. Good, good evening, Bonita. All right, so um, just let me do the Caribbean roll call. Uh, Jawawan is from Trinidad. Macmillan is from St. Vincent, but he's trapped in Trinidad. Uh, Cooper, you want to remind me where you're from? And Bonita, we're going to be having a wonderful evening this evening. All right, so while they type where they're from, as we want to do the Caribbean roll call, I have to take you on a virtual field trip. Now, Cooper is from Jamaica. Big up yourself, Cooper. And what about Bonita? Where are you from? For those persons who are watching us from distant land, welcome to the show. And if you have not yet subscribed, it's not too late. Get yourself a YouTube account. Come on over so you can be a part of the chat. If you wish not to, please stay just where you are and watch us to the end. So this evening, I'm going to be taking you on a virtual field trip. Of course, your teacher will not be there with you. I will not be there with you. So I'm asking now that you take out your pens and your pencil or paper, whichever it is, and I want you to write down these places that I'm going to send you. Now, these places that you're going to be going, in some cases, you are going to go back in time. In some cases, you are going to go across the ocean. And in some cases, who knows, you might be going into the volcano. But guess what? It's important that you take these field trips to have a better appreciation of ecology as it is for your CSEC biology syllabus. In Jamaica, we would have gone to the UWI Marine Lab to look at some of these features. However, there's always a constraint with cash. So usually we really don't have much places that we can go because of the cash. We'd like to go to like Soapberry or go to the National Dump or Landfill, whichever they call it. But usually money is a problem. All right, so some places that I want you to go are events I want you to visit. I want you to visit Exxon Valdex, E-X, Exxon Valdex. Exxon Valdex is an oil spill, and I want you to look at that. Uh, you could just YouTube it, not know, of course, but I want you to see what happened here and the effect of this oil spill on biodiversity. So that's Exxon Valdex. I told you yesterday about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. I want you to write down that as well, and I want you to look at it at YouTube. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. I want you to look at Hurricane Gilbert, which is, of course, a natural disaster. So, Exxon Valdex, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Hurricane Gilbert, the Garbage Barge. I want you to look at the Garbage Barge as well. I want you to look at the Ariel Sea, if you did not yesterday. I want you to look at the Bhopal gas tragedy. I want you to look at the Bhopal gas tragedy as we look at air pollution. I want you to look at Minimata disease. If you did not look at Minimata yesterday, I want you to look at Minimata as we look at water pollution. I want you to look at the Irish potato blight of Ireland. The Irish potato blight of Ireland. As we look at food scarcity and how much genetic engineering has helped us as a population to grow. I want you also to look at Ells Gate. Ells Gate. I want you to look at Ells Gate. And I want you to look at the gray skies of England that happened in 1952. I made mention of it yesterday. I want you to look at that Tsunami. I don't remember what year it was. Uh, that came, I think, boxing there or something like that. I want you to look at the tsunami. Uh, that's a natural disaster. 
and its effect on population and the existence of man. I want you to look at the panda bear and its diet. What is it that the panda bear eats? Now, that is going to be your virtual field trip. And having completed all these trips into natural and man-made disaster, you should be at a place where you should be writing really, really comfortably for your exam should you see questions on ecology. Do we have them all? If not, let me know now so I can just repeat them or I might just, just, I might just repeat them. So we're going to be going on a field trip I said earlier. We're going to visit the incident of the Exxon Valdex, Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Hurricane Gilbert, the Garbage Barge, the Ariel Sea, Opal Gas Tragedy, Love Canal, Minimata Disease, Irish Potato Blight of Ireland, Ellsgate, Grey Skies of England, 1952, and that tsunami that came, I think it was on Boxing Day. I also want you to look at the diet of the panda bear. I want you to tell me what is it that the panda bear eats. I, I want you to give me the panda bear diet uh, before the end of the show. Again, welcome. We have a very interesting lineup this evening. We continue the lesson from yesterday and we are hoping that we'll just have one more lesson in ecology and you would have learned. We have looked at the syllabus and of course we've included in the shows yesterday and the day before, I think, uh, some of the words that we're seeing on the exam paper that we have not seen in the textbook. And we, of course, we, we place you on guard so that you can be prepared for your exam. Might I also apologize for the show on Wednesday? My son, I, I, I have listened to the, the, the video and I realized that the crying for the first part of the video uh, it was really, really loud. But might I say, my little son, I love him dearly. And if you have walked the road that I have walked, then you would understand. Persons might say that he's spoiled if he's not in that, his lap, he's crying and all of that. But fine for those persons who will say that. But if you have ever been a victim of paternity fraud, when you have a child, you will love it more than anything else in the world. So, and I cries every now and then. Forgive me when he does. Um, Sometimes he doesn't cry, but there are times when he's just not on his, uh, that mood, you know? So he gets a little miserable, but he's fine. He was with his mom. So it's not that I left him alone while he was crying. He was with his mom. So that bit of disclaimer and apology, we're going to up on right into the lesson. Now the human population continues to grow and it continues to grow primarily because of what we want to consider to be our intelligence. Now, because we are so intelligent, we have managed to manipulate the environment to make it more suitable for ourselves, but indeed not so suitable for our neighbors, other organisms. As a result, our action would have contributed to the environment by Removing land space, pollution, causing water shortage, shortage, and of course, climate change. Now, the rising population has forced human to inhabit new spaces. This might be comfortable for man. But in most cases, what this has done is to place other organisms on the edge. And we spoke about the edge yesterday, and we said the edge is that place where we tend to push organisms so that they become, they become extinct. I don't even want to talk about endangered. They become extinct as a result of our action. Now, in order for us to live and live comfortably as humans, there is always production. 
And wherever there is production, you will agree that there is going to be waste. And where there is waste, usually it is followed by pollution. So the production form a major part of human existence. And of course, it goes without saying, we are now benefiting or suffering from water pollution, air pollution, and land pollution. Water bodies are polluted as a result of dredging, example, as it were, for the sea to make passage for ships. Oil spill, as it was with Exxon Valdex, runoff from farms and our municipal runoff. And of course, agriculture waste are all things that are contributing to the loss of our water reserves. All this, of course, is as a result of man's intelligence and his interest to colonize earth and, as you would put it, live comfortably. The age of industrialization has also led to air pollution, ozone depletion, and some say, of course, global warming. Now, ozone depletion, one might talk about the greenhouse effect. And of course, the rise in the earth temperature that is associated with global warming. This, of course, will eventually lead to changes in our weather pattern, flooding of low-lying region, and of course, could send some organisms into the extinction vortex. Agriculture has also played a major role in the advancement of the human race. Without agriculture and domesticated animals, we would never be able to feed ourselves. We have made advances, uh, advancement in agriculture. With the Ireland Irish potato blight, many persons died for hunger. Since then, we have mastered or made major improvement, major strides with genetic engineering, and now we have crops like rice and many other cereals that we use to feed the world population. With all this, it equates to one thing, human becoming more dominant. With the dominance of human, we now shift ourselves in a position where we become the enemy of our own planet. Let us look at some of the things that we have done as a result of us trying to be more comfortable, paying little or no attention to other organisms, and as such, we have negatively impacted biodiversity. So we have placed some organisms at risk. And as such, there is a loss of biodiversity, and as it were with the Caribbean, which has its rich history of endemic organism, they too are now suffering from the hands of human. The change in our weather condition, the climatic pattern, cannot be overemphasized or it will not reduce the need to call for change. We might be familiar by now with the El Nino, the La Nino effect. How can we change? What can we do to protect this, our noble space, planet Earth? Let's look at how we classify the organisms that are at risk. 
there are three major classifications that we can use. And it's very important that you know these classifications as you must know your role. Are you going to be a part of the problem or a part of the solution? So first, we have those organisms that we consider to be vulnerable. Now, vulnerable organisms, they refer to organisms or species which may become endangered in a short time as the population is reducing rapidly. So that's the first set of organism we are concerned about, the vulnerable organism. Then we have those organisms, second classification, the endangered organism. And the endangered organism refers to species where the numbers have reduced to a point that the survival of that species is almost impossible. All this because of man and his greed. Then, the dreaded are the sad part. The part where we say goodbye to a species, never to see that species again. Extinction. So the classification of organisms at risk Vulnerable, endangered, and extinct. As this is a Caribbean forum, I'm sure within your locality or your local, you can speak to organisms that you would have heard of that are no more. Let us look at why the rate of extinction is increasing. And now I'm going to pause to take your responses. Write in the chat for me some of the reasons why the rate of extinction across the world is increasing. What are some of the factors? that are contributing to this increase in extinction. Just type it in the chat there for me. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're watching from distant land and you're not yet a member of the family, we invite you to join us at CSEC Biology, the cover page. All right. So we want to look at some of those things, the factors that are contributing to this increase in extinction. Human predation and disease among species. All right? So human predation, human eating them. And we're going to look at that a little bit. Uh, sir, the increased destruction of animals' habitat. Otisha deforestation, Jazel Gracie, unnecessary hunting. Oh, wow. This class is ready and prepared. Matt Mellon, where are you? I'm, I know all the students, you know, you're not going to hide in the class. Cooper, Bonita, what's your response? So we're looking at those driving factors, those factors that are leading to this increase extinction of organisms can you imagine if a human population were to become extinct so i share with you my list habitat destruction as in deforestation is a major cause of organism becoming extinct Pollution, invasive species are species that are more competitive, over hunting or over harvesting. The drastic change 
in weather, climatic condition, those two have contributed to the vast or the large or the rapid increase in extinction of organisms. Remember, at any time you can replay the show to get the list I've just presented. Let's look at habitat destruction. Trees serve a vital role in the environment. You would understand they play a very important part in the water cycle. They play a very important role in the carbon cycle. And of course, they serve as perch site for migrating birds. The forest happens to be the habitat for many organisms. As a result of destruction of habitats in Jamaica, the following organisms it's in the Caribbean, not only Jamaica. In the Caribbean, the following organisms are considered to be endangered. The manatee. I think they call in Jamaica, they call the manatee a sea cow or something like that. I think it's a herbivore. And it's one of those organisms that we want to take care of because it's endangered. And you understand Endangered is like third. Vulnerable, endangered, extinct. We don't want our monetary to get there. So as much as possible, you have to share the information. Protect biodiversity. Then we have the bird that is called the whistling duck. That's endangered as well. Then we have the leatherback turtle. And I'll be giving you a whole long list of other organisms that are endangered in the Caribbean. So wherever you are in the Caribbean, let us hold hands and share the message. Protect biodiversity. Reuse, reduce, and recycle. What are the reasons for deforestation? Share with me in the chat. Why is it that we are cutting down our forests? What are some of the causes? Do we have alternatives? So just type in the chat for me. Why is it that we are cutting down the forests? Why deforestation? And you will recall I made mention in the two classes before about afforestation and airy forestation. So Atisha is saying that we are cutting down the forest for wood, and that's firewood, biomass. Lenny Cooper, to build big organizations or to build housing schemes. For wood, Kevin is saying for wood, for firewood, for wood for construction, for timber, for furniture. Jawawa is said to build road and, of course, for urbanization. We are cutting through the forest. And while we cut through the forest, let me give you an example. You'd have like bats, like rat bats that go across this passage. And when you make a road there, if you have ever gone through a, a, a forest that a, a road has been built uh, recently, you will find that if you drive there during the night, a whole lot of organism is eating into the vehicle, a whole lot. They are eating into the vehicle. And that is a result, and that is a good example of us putting organisms on the edge. Now, for agricultural expansion, we want to make large farms because, of course, we want to satisfy the world food need. So all these are reasons why the forests continue to be removed. So we're cutting down the forest from my list for timber, firewood, road, housing, agriculture, which means that my students are spot on, and of course, industry. 
But what's, what, what are the disadvantages to build boats and houses? True. Um, what are the disadvantages of deforestation? Type in the chat for me. What are the ills? What are the bad? What's bad about deforestation? What's bad about deforestation? Uh, why is deforestation bad? Type in the chat for me. I'm always listening. Animal will, of course, lose their habitat. And you understand, some of these animals, they lose their habitat, they are disoriented. They might try to find somewhere else to live, but it's just not suitable. In some cases, uh, deforestation would cause more lighting or more light to enter a, a habitat. And as such, the organisms that are nocturnal, they would, of course, probably miss mating uh, season. They would miss uh, calls to escape danger and so on because they are all confused as to whether it's really night or day. They might actually miss their food. And you understand if you miss your food, what that could cause. Then, of course, it could cause soil erosion because now the soil is bare. So the soil is naked, as one would say. So we are going to have sheet erosion, real erosion, gully erosion, and then, of course, massive landslides. Then, of course, you understand when we remove the tree and we are having this erosion, we are going to have heavy siltation of our water bodies. So the river is going to become heavily silted. The coastline is going to become heavily silted. And as these become heavily silted, what happens is that, of course, you would say the river will rise. And when the river rise or the sea become a little higher there at the low-lying region, then you are going to have flooding. You are going to have loss of life and property. Then we have, sir, it will cause an increase in global warming. It will cause an increase in global warming because, of course, the trees are supposed to be helped with the removal of that excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The trees are supposed to be serving as carbon sink, where they are going to store some of the carbon dioxide. Store some of the carbon. It would have taken it in as carbon dioxide. And as such, when we remove them, we have more carbon dioxide out there. And, of course, an increase in the earth temperature is likely. Our species will die. We remove the, the trees. Of course, organisms are going to enter the extinction vortex. Because there are some birds, when we talk about arboreal, remember we're doing uh, the food web. Arboreal, those organisms that live in the tree. If we remove the tree, they might have to go on the ground. And if they go on the ground, they are just falling um, prey to predators. Another important thing is that we are going to have reduced biodiversity. So this large variety of, of, of organisms that we have, this type of tree, that type of tree. I was told that there was a tree in, in Portland called the manchineal tree. This is a very special tree because what happens is that if it rains and you stand under that tree, the water that comes off that tree would, would burn your skin. I don't know, I was, I, I was told that it is still in Cuba. I don't know, but that tree is no longer in Manchineal. The, on, the only thing of the tree that is left in Portland is the name given to the district Manchineal. Then we are looking now, it makes the air drier and hotter. Have you ever been in some low-lying area where there are no trees, like in the middle of the day? Oh my, nowhere, nothing to sh like shield you from the sun? I agree with you, Kevin. Uh, is it Kevin? Macmillan. It's Macmillan. Jawawan, carbon dioxide emission and the loss of biological diversity. Of course, less oxygen as the plants will not be giving up. There will be no plant to give up oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. So, of course, the oxygen level in the air will be reduced. Of course, we're going to be losing both plants and animals, and we have to agree that there is, of course, going to be climate change. So, on my list, we're going to be having loss of habitat, 
loss of bio like loss of biodiversity loss of medicinal value so you know that there are some plants out there that we're using to cure all sorts of disease and so on um we're not going to be having those plants because the loss of biodiversity so so we lost pharmaceutical and medicinal value as we remove the forest of course we are going to be losing organisms which captured nicely into biodiversity we are going to be losing carbon sink which are the trees we are going to be losing those as well and of course we are going to have increased surface runoff which is going to lead definitely to of course flooding in low lying region so there we have a lot we want to look now at competitive species and competitive species, I want to just give you some terms here before we move on. We have species that are referred to as exotic. No, I'm not going to steal your show. Exotic. I'm going to give persons assignment now. Jawawan, research and tell us in the chat what are exotic species. Then I want Giselle Gracie to tell me what are invasive species. So we have exotic species, we have invasive species, and I also want, I'm going to ask Macmillan to tell me what is it that we refer to as feral organism. Feral organism. So we have exotic, then we have invasive, then we have feral, Then we have feral. Okay, so just remind me, Jawawan is going to look at exotic species. You're going to tell me what are exotic species. Jazelle Gracie, she's going to tell me what are invasive species. Uh, Macmillan is going to tell me about feral organisms. And then there are other persons here. Everybody has to play a part. Otisha Gray. I want you to tell me exotic. I want you to tell me about endemic organisms. Organisms that are endemic. What do we mean by an organism being endemic? So an organism is endemic to the Caribbean. We're looking at exotic organism. We're looking at invasive organism. And we're also looking at feral organism. Now, feral organism, an exotic organism like the lionfish could become an invasive organism. Like the Pernavidus, which we is considered to be releasing uh, the arbor, Kingston Arbor, by buoyancy water. And buoyancy water is that water that the ship takes up. And when it gets into your arbor, based on the salt content of the water, it would release that water in order to float nicely in the sea. So we're, we're waiting on those. But while we wait on those, we want to look at competitive species. So competitive species will always leave or lead organism to that extinction vortex. So exotic species often refer to an alien, non-native, non-indigenous, or introduced species, or those that occur in rare outside in areas outside of their natural geographical range. Remember that when we put these things up, we want to cite where we're getting them from. We don't want to act as if the content is ours. Always remember to put that there. Look where you get it from and put it the, the thing there. All right. So vagrant species, those that appear from time to time, from time to time. Um, beyond their normal range may often be confused with exotic species, right? So invasive species, uh, they can be mistaken at times because they are so rare and when they come into your domain, they seem to be something new. It's like Brennan and Nancy carrying home fire. Fire was so new. And when they brought home fire, remember what happened to Brennan and Nancy house? So the, the, just think about it that way. If the invasive species might trick you to be an exotic species. Hello, Shakila. All right, Macmillan, Wikipedia. 
Uh, remember, Wiki is not the most credible source, but uh, we go with it. So a Wikipedia, a feral animal or plant is one that lives in the wild, but is descended from domesticated species. Uh, simply put, a feral organism is a wild organism. All right, so you know you have some wild dogs and some wild cats and so on. So we say that they are feral. So we talk about competitive species. Uh, I know that it is not in your syllabus, but you need to know these little things. It's, some of them mean the same thing and they have sort of whole for meaning. So you want to ensure that you have all these little things locked. All right, so we are still waiting on endemic and invasive. We are still waiting on endemic and invasive. So feral organisms are like wild dogs, right? Or any wild animal, all right? So um, Google, um, Sh Shania, Sh is it Shania Gray, all right? Um, remember, Google is just the browser, all right? I like when you guys do these things, so I, I get to help you. Google is just a browser. So when you go to Google, Google is not the in, Google is not the owner of the information. So when you look at the article, wherever you read the article from, you might see like a website there that it is coming from, or you might see the name of the author. So you when you do you went on Google and you got the information on Google, it's like you went to the market and you got some tomato. You can't come up and say you got the tomato just from the market. The, the tomato doesn't belong to the market. The tomato belong to that specific vendor. So when we rip information from the internet to say that it is from Google is not sufficient because Google will tell you in their disclaimer that the information does not belong to them. All right? And we don't want anybody to say that we are stealing their information. We want to, of course, give persons credit where it is due. All right? Because for intellectual property, we want to ensure that persons continue to do the nice work of researching and providing the most credible information that we can use and build on. So that is the whole reason of ensuring that we reference whatever we're using and not to use it as if it were ours. Remember, Jazel Gracie, I'm asking for the reference, right? A Wikipedia is Wikipedia, all right? So you have to get used to that and I might have to show you, but I want the information to reference when you go research. Now, endemism is a state of a species being a native to a single defined geographical location such as an island. I don't want to leave this as yet. The Caribbean island has a rich heritage of endemism. And one of the reasons why we have this rich heritage of endemism is that we are just located on some little patches of land. And because we are located on some little patches of land, we have little pockets of organism on these land and based on the food type, as it were with um, Charles Darwin on the Finch and the Galapagos Island. So too, we have these organisms which had to evolve in order to survive on the different Caribbean islands. And when I talk, when, when, later on in the lesson, where we talk about the American crocodile, everybody is going to say the American crocodile, then where am I doing a Jamaica? All right, so that type of thing, we have to understand endemism. Each little Caribbean island have their own little culture, their own little set of organism, right? So the organism that is on that island might only be found on that island. As it were for Jamaica, can I boast about the, um, the giant swallowtail butterfly? Can I boast about the hummingbird, the sisal tail hummingbird in Jamaica? Can I talk about the, the, the coney in Jamaica? Can I talk about our, our um, iguana? That is, of course, endangered in Jamaica. Yes. And I'm sure Cuba could talk about theirs. Trinidad could talk about theirs. St. Vincent could talk about theirs. Cayman could talk about theirs. Guyana, of course, should have some amount of endemism. But, uh, boy, I tell you, I like Guyana. Guyana have a whole heap of water. All right, let us move on. So, Jassel Gracie said, invasive species is not often... Uh, there you go, Anai. Invasive species is most often a non-native species that spreads from a point of introduction, a point of introduction to become naturalized and negatively alters its new environment. 
got it from Bing. Bing is also a browser. Bing is also a browser. Google is also a browser. All right? So we have to work on that. All right? So if you go there, whenever you went there, if you were supposed to look like in the search pane at the top, uh, where you have the, the address bar, I think that is what it is called, you probably would have seen www.something and you would have seen where the information is coming from, who is the owner or the creator of the information. Let me just put it out. This is not my information. This is information researched by the kids and they are pretty much in a learning mode. I really don't want it to copyright me for this post. All right? But we are going to be learning how to, of course, cite information because we really don't want to get in trouble with uh, schools and colleges as we move on. Sir, yeah, I realize, so sh why are you using two names today, Otisha? All right, never mind. Just let us do the thing. All right, so we're looking at competitive, spe competitive speech when I gave you those. And one of the most common what we usually talk about, uh, you've heard me talking about uh, a, a lot of time, is those invasive species. And a lot with the lionfish is one of those exotic species that became invasive. All right? Now, we have cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. They have a whole lot of wild dogs. Everybody know them. And in Jamaica, we have the mongoose. And we spoke about the mongoose already. A lot of the things that we're going to be repeating. Because it's, when it comes to ecology, most of the things repeat. Now, look what happened with the cats and dogs. They are killing birds. The cats, they are going into bird nests and they are eating the young. And in some cases, birds are just laying two eggs. So they eat the eggs, this, the, 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 the young this year, they eat the, the young next year. And then after they eat the young, then the mosquito might find it, not the mosquito, the mongoose, sorry. The mongoose might find the egg and the mongoose will eat. Uh, all right, cool. All right, so um, the mongoose might also eat the eggs. And of course, both the dogs and the cat, they are also eating a lot of our reptile. Let us talk about the Jamaican iguana. The Jamaican iguana was considered to be extinct years ago. And some hunter went into the hills. And while he was there, he heard his dog barking, barking, barking. The dog just would not come on the trail. And he turned back to find out what was happening. And he realized that the dog had a steady gaze uh, at, in a particular location in a hole. And that is how they found a... Uh, uh, an iguana, and then they moved the iguana from the hills of Elsha, and they took it to Oak Zoo, and there they have, they've had it at the zoo, and they have a breeding program now where they breed them and release them back into the hills of Elsha. So we don't have any big, nice iguana that like came on, but we have a little iguana. Um, it's about probably this, probably about two feet. They're about long, and if you go to Oak Zoo there in Kingston, you will see what the Jamaican iguana looks like. And we would have spoken about the lionfish. And the lionfish is this fish with those things looking like feathers. And I think it attacks the, 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 the parrotfish or the fingerling or something like that. But it is, of course, affecting our fish stock. And these are competitive species. The competitive species I told you about before, they have competitive advantage. They are either faster, they, either, they can survive something more than the native organism or the endemic organism. They tend to do better with some condition of the environment or they would have evolved to survive. And in so doing, they are able to, of course, outdo the native organism. So competitive species are also species that are, are also a, a, another factor that is leading organisms into the extinction vortex. And when we talk about the extinction vortex, uh, we're, we're saying that they are becoming extinct as a result of com competitive species. Then we have hunting, which also leads to extinction. Now, you might have heard about the dodo bird. I don't know if you watch um, America Got Planet and there was this little fellow on it there. They gave him a comment that he didn't like and he was like, oh, I'll have to call National Geographic and tell him that the dodo bird is here or something to that effect. And that bird went um, extinct as a result of um, hunting. Then you have the polar bear. That too um, seems to be going out as well. I would have gone. Then we have the black bear. And of course, we have a lot of fish that we would have eat them off or dynamite them off 
or use the atatrol to kill them or use drift neck to kill them or something like that, right? But they have also been gone. Now, at risk in the Caribbean, let me tell you some organisms that are at risk in the Caribbean. The West Indian flamingo, the Barbuda wobbler, the Cayman parrot, the Oxbill turtle, the loggerhead turtle, the Cuban tree boa, iguanas, and of course, that organism that Jazelle Gracie said yesterday, they are always on the street of Portmore. What are, what are those organisms, Jazelle Gracie? The organisms that are on the streets of Portmore that are at risk. I don't know how they are at risk and I see they're heating dogs and colonizing place, all because we have infringed on their space. We have cleared the swamp and now we're building houses. So of course, the American crocodile, which is of course an endangered species in Jamaica, they are also at risk. And as such, the government is of course protecting these organisms. And if you um, should catch or hurt or arm them, I think there is something like a hundred thousand fine or something there about. So if you see the crocodile and they are in your space, call Nepal. There is something else I wanted to share with you. Uh, I just remember the organisms that are extinct. They are usually um, reported or published by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. That is IUCN. So organisms that are extinct are organisms that, yes, they are usually published by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. How are we doing so far? Can we take some more? The lesson today was planned for just an hour, so you don't worry, need to worry yourself. And you see, I've been going very, very fast. You know, so I really planned the lesson for an hour. We, we eat iguana in Trini. My, my. Uh, Jawawan, just let me take a little rest and talk about that. I am even afraid of that, of that organism. I am afraid of it. Now, in Jamaica, we don't eat it. I would can't eat it. And I wouldn't want anybody to eat it. I wouldn't want anybody to eat it. Right? Jazel Grace, you go to Trinidad and eat and eat iguana. Otisha Gray, you eat iguana in a, in a Guyana. Let me think. With plenty curry, pepper, we're good to go. The iguana on one big lizard. Who eat lizard? Who oh, my works? So you've got a lot of iguanas in Trinidad, I think. Jawawan? I make sure I don't know the laws of Trinidad. I don't know those things that are endangered, are those things that are protected, are those things that are on the uh, watch list. I don't know. Make sure that you are obeying the law because based on the literature from CXC, are the literature for us to cover um, iguanas are among the list of organisms in the Caribbean that are in danger. Sir, I am answering to what you asked earlier. I'm not too sure what I asked. People do, I don't. Yeah, all right. Uh, Macmillan, they eat it in St. Vincent too. Am I supposed to assume that all the Caribbean eat iguana except Jamaica? It's very healthy, but it have it has a hunting season. All right, so it, that means that it is somewhat protected. Like here, we have some birds, like the ball plate and the white wing. We hunt, we shoot them, but we have hunting season. And you must have a permit to shoot, and you can't shoot outside of that time. All right, so um, hunting season, I hear you. 
um, make sure that we follow the laws. We really don't want these organisms to become extinct. Of course, I'm sure that everybody will want their offspring to see most of what they have seen. Be that it is good. All right, so wonderful, wonderful. Um, I heard, let me tell you something. You see, I see, um, who said it? I think Jawaran said, Jawaran said that it is healthy. One other thing, when persons want to sell some of these things, you see, they were saying that um, if they want persons to catch a lionfish, what they do is to tell them that it's an aphrodisiac. And it's the same thing with crocodile in Jamaica. Persons are selling the meat because they, they think that it boosts some sexual prowess, right? So we don't want to follow those stuff. We want to ensure that we reach out to the local um, authorities and ensure that we are not troubling organisms that we shouldn't. All right. So how to reduce the risk of extinction? That is where we are. Type in the chat for me, how can we reduce this risk of extinction? How, of course, and reducing the risk of, of extinction would, of course, mean that we are protecting biodiversity. Remember that if you are watching from distant land, you still can join us to be a part of the chat. And if you have not yet liked, share, or subscribed, now might just be the right time to do so. It's Mr. Wilson, CSET Biology, HSB Live, and we come to you on a Friday at 5 p.m., Sunday at 5 p.m., and of course, on a Wednesday at 5 p.m. It's a free Caribbean show, and this is a place where all views can contend. And of course, we have a lovely family where we are reaching students from right across the Caribbean. We're going to be here until exams, and you can find us some of our products, you can find virtual labs, you can find actual labs, you can find animation, you can find notes, past papers, and in some cases, there is also information technology content. So you want to ensure that you like, share, and subscribe, and be a part of this fast-growing Caribbean family. So, Jazel Gracie is saying the lionfish can be poisonous if the bone joke can be it can poison you. All right, Kevin, sir, but putting in place by putting in place hunting restriction, so we could use laws to, of course, protect organism that uh, they don't actually reach the extinction vortex. Less hunting. All right, don't just go about and hunt things just to get the toss, or just to hunt things because it's a game. Uh, Put in protection laws, of course. Education about endangered species. So we have, to en we have to educate persons on the importance of biodiversity. And they might have, of course, a greater interest. However, we have the cultural problem to overcome, which is usually one of the biggest things to get the person to effect a change. Uh, protect their habitat. Of course, we need to set up games reserve that are like the Blue Mountain National Park, the Drunk Mountain National Park, the Black River Maras, the uh, Port Royal uh, Wetland. I don't even the Ramsar. You know the Ramsar Agreement that have these protected areas. Of course, we have a lot of those. Uh, we do protect the. We do protect the laws. I'm not too sure what's happening here, Jawawan. See if we can revisit that. Uh, then we have Amoy. Hey, how you doing? Uh, give places back to nature. Yes, and that is why we have the parks. And I made mention of the Black River Maras. I made mention of the Port Royal Wetland. Um, that's a protected area under the Ramsar Agreement. You have the Montego Bay. And these are in Jamaica. You have the Montego Bay Fish Estuary. And I think you have like Mesa River. That's I think that's also a protected area. I don't remember. But you could find these on a map. There's a map in Jamaica that show you all these protected areas under the Ramsar Agreement. Uh, pollution. Reduce pollution. Yes, you have to reduce pollution. Welcome Creek. Uh, reduce pollution. Um, Moore is saying, hi, good night. Uh, Moore, we're trying to find out what are some other things that we can do to reduce extinction or to ensure that we don't have organisms moving into the extinction vortex. 
more light, wildlife rehabilitation. All right, before I hop on into the list of things that I have, um, recycle and buy sustainable products. Example, don't buy natural fur coats. Uh, that is so true. Don't go buy a natural fur coat like the one you see in that video. I don't want to say the name of the video because that is, of course, the that is, of course, a, a, a animal. He is saying that they do observe the laws, but hunt during the uh, sheep, hunt during the hunting season. All right, beautiful. Thanks, Adi. All right, so in Jamaica, I'm going to tell you some of the laws, and I'm telling you some of the laws because sometimes a practical approach makes a difference. Now, we have forest rangers, right? And in order to cut a tree in the, in the park area, you have to have a permit. To have a power saw, you have to have a license. You can't just go and cut down a tree like that. So we have forest rangers in Jamaica. Uh, so that's for the forest. Then we also have laws that regulate how fast you can seal in the arbor. It's something like one nuts because you don't want to disturb the sea floor. Then we have the special size nets that we use to fish. And we also have hunting season where we hunt for birds. Uh, we have protected areas. I spoke about the Blue Mountain Park, the Dranko Mountain Park. I spoke about the, the wetlands that are protected under the Ramsar Agreement. We have sanctuary, how we have the zoo, all of these are things that are in place to ensure that we reduce or minimize extinction. Uh, reduce your personal footprint. You want to reduce your personal footprint. You want to reduce the carbon footprint. All right. Very good. Um, Jazelle Gracie, Black River Safari. Yes, yeah, the Black River Maras, they call it. All right. Am I, am I, sorry, Angel Moore, establishment of laws um set a certain certain month or season for hunting yes we have that i think it's sometime around september there about we have bird season in jamaica i don't know that there's any other i think they hunt for like wild hogs in jamaica i don't know if that is sort of something regulated but i am sure that birds hunting of birds in jamaica that is regulated so of course to reduce extinction my list say that you need to of course uh set up sanctuary uh, you have to have like wildlife parks. You have to have reserve, right? Areas that human is not, it's out of touch. Human just don't go there. Leave it alone. You're not supposed to be there. Uh, limit human access to uh, these organisms. So, of course, you're not supposed to be seen around a crocodile. While you're playing with a crocodile, there's a fine for that. Leave the crocodile alone. All right? Um, we have the, what we refer to. This might be a little bigger than CXC. And the carrot cash approach. What a carrot cash approach means is that you provide incentive for those persons who are doing the well, carrot stick approach, it's called. Provide incentive, that is the carrot, um, for those persons who are doing well. And the stick is that you, you um, apply sanction for those persons who are in breach. And of course, we made mention of laws. And of course, we already said that, of course, Education is the big thing. And we've been talking about education. Share the knowledge, share the knowledge, share the knowledge so that, of course, persons can become compliant. So, of course, we have a whole lot here. Uh, I, I realize, Jay, you're, you're late and, I mean, awfully late, but we welcome you. Um, our next show, of course, is going to be on Sunday. We are trying to put a wrap to ecology. I remember a moist here and am I supposed to be seeing past paper rolling out next week for HSB? And the next week, Wednesday, is going to be more HSB than bio. Because am I saying that you're doing more bio than HSB? You know, I see a little HSB, but you're doing more bio. Um, I've been getting some email, getting some messages. Persons are asking where they can find HSB video. For the greater part, except for the labs that are on my channel, it is both biology and HSB. Trust me, their life processes. Little ecology, it's both bio and HSB. As of Wednesday, we are going to be taking that detour where we are going to be looking even up as uh, when we go up to genetics, both syllabus go, go as far. And then when we move away now 
we are start, we are, we are going to be looking at disease, which is a little different. I am going to be going through the HSB book and I'm going to be mapping up little areas that I might not have covered that as I should if there are such if there are any areas like that. So nobody needs to uh worry too much. I am going to be here and doing and I do enjoy teaching, you know. One of the things about teaching students that teaching students who want to learn is that it ensures that you do your research, it ensures that you cover the syllabus. If you are teaching students who don't want to learn, it makes you a teacher who sometimes you don't even go over so because you can't reach over there because the students are not going there. So I do like when students come on and they prod me, uh, go some more, go some more, go some more. I really appreciate the fact for many persons they have been here for like three days. They have been here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I really appreciate that. Sir, I heard we have to do a practical for HSB. Is that true? If you are doing the HSB for exam in 2021, you will be doing an SBA. The new syllabus has an SBA in it. Um, we are going to be looking at that. In a matter of fact, we're going to be publishing a video of a site and as much as... Let me tell you something. The new syllabus has a specimen paper for the HSB um, exam that you are going to do, the HSB practical. And might I tell you, there's a paper tree in the back of the syllabus. That shows you nicely how that practical is supposed to be written up. So if you are in grade 10 and you are going to be doing HSB, yes, you are going to be having an SBA. If you are in grade 10 now as we speak and you are doing HSB, yes, you are going to be doing a, a SBA. Uh, let me see what that means here now. Sir, what is your email address? Uh, we've been asking about this email address. Um, nobody got it for me yesterday. I'm going to try to see if I can find it. Um, you understand I don't use the email address. I use other persons. I don't know my phone number. And one of the reasons I don't know my phone number, I've never called myself. <laughs> Funny, eh? Yeah, I've never called myself. So as a result, I can't remember. But no, I remember my phone number very well. I think I have grown. All right, so I am going to be giving you, Jawawan was supposed to have sent me uh, yesterday or day before yesterday. She should have sent some, sent me 2019. So I'm going to look for my phone or my email address for you. Just give me one second and I'll be back. I'm going on to the channel. I, I realize that a lot of persons don't know how to access the channel. And I'm going to tell you, you are going to type in CSEC Biology, the cover page. When it comes up, you are going to see this blue blue circular icon that says CSET Biology TCP. Click on that icon. It's going to take you into the channel. When you get into the channel, you'll see a whole host of headings and all these headings have different things. I think this discussion might be community for you or it might be discussion. I'm not too sure. So when you head on over to this, the channel, you are going to have a home and you are going to there, there's going to be a greeting video. If you are a new person to the channel, you are going to see a video. And if you are a subscriber to the channel, you are going to see a different video. All right? So if you are new, you see a, a video. If you are a subscriber, you see a different video. Then you go into videos and you are going to see a whole long list of videos, probably 100 and odd videos. Then you can click on playlists and you can choose a playlist that suits you. If you are doing, for, doing HSB, look for HSB playlist. And you might see some of the, the movies that I have watched. So um, there's a movie there that says, Remember the Goal. That is a nice movie. I usually have movies that my kids have to watch. One is one of the movies that my kids usually watch is Mona Lisa Smile. And there's this new movie I have now, Remember the Goal. If you go to my channel, you'll see that. Then you will see Channel. And you will see some of the persons that I have subscribed to. So you'll get to know me a little more. Some of the things that I like you'll see some persons that I have subscribed to. And then you up on over into discussion. And when you get into discussion, that is where you are going to see the leads of what I'm doing. Everything that happens, if I have to send you an apology, it will be there. If we are going to be doing something new on the channel, it is going to be there. If I'm supposed to have a live with you and I can't make it for the live, you are going to see a message there that, oops, sorry, I'm having a problem. I can't make it for the live today or something like that. I hope that will never happen. All right? So then when you go to about on the page, you are going to see uh, my email address under details. It is extreme solutions 
Extreme Solutions J A at gmail.com. Can I copy this and put it over there for you? Uh, don't do that to me, no. All right, I'm copying it and I'm coming back to you shortly. All right, copy. And I am back with you. Uh, very good. So I'm here. Oh, there we go. So that is the email address for the channel. Uh, I look for your email. All right, so that's my email address uh, for the channel. So if you have past paper for HSB, multiple choice, and so on, that you want to send to the pool that we can work on, we will greatly appreciate that. But somebody, Ram Logan. Ram Logan, wh which island are you from? I, I, I hope I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mispronounce it or crucify your name. Oh, Trinidad. Okay, cool. Not a problem. Why is it that you want to share with me? Oh, you won't see the email address if you are using that phone. All right. Shortage of water. All right, beautiful. We, we greatly appreciate that. All right, so we want to move on now to shortage of water as we attempt to bring the curtain down. Uh, shortage of water. Water is a big resource. I remember when I did environmental science, there were some courses that you had to do. You did marine by itself. You had to do water as a course by itself. You had to do forestry as a course by itself and sampling. And when I'm teaching you guys and that this information coming back, it's like I'm saying, whoa, I need to teach these guys because they just pull back all of these stuff that I love to talk about. Now, water, we are having a problem with water. And I don't know if anybody is here from uh, Cayman. I've never left Jamaica. I've said that before. I wish somebody can buy me a ticket to leave the island someday. Poor teacher I am, but I still continue to give away. Um, I give what I can give. I don't have money. I'm a poor man as you look at me, but I still continue to give away. All right. So I was told that man has no river. So Cayman has to find some way to make water or to get water. Now, the causes of water shortage. What are some of the causes for water shortage? I want you to type that in the chat now. As we bring the curtain down, about 10, 15 minutes we have left. What are some of the causes of water shortage? And I'm talking about those big causes. Yeah, we know we leave the pipe running and all of that. But what are the big causes of water shortage? Would you believe that deforestation is one of those major causes? So deforestation is a major cause of water shortage. One might ask, oh, trees of course, is a part of the water cycle. They would be responsible for transpiration and, of course, some amount of evaporation. So the trees, they are pulling water from deep into the soil and it is going through the leaf, of course, into the atmosphere. Persons are saying overpopulation, a water pollution. Yes, those are factors leading for, to water shortage. Persons are saying mismanagement of water for industrial production, as when we are with steel when we are making steel and so on we tend to steel and iron we tend to use the water for cooling in the power plants that for electricity we use the water for cooling and i know that um there was a sugar factory somewhere in saint elizabeth there about in that region that was closed down because it had released this water into the river and it led to some fish kill uh, water pollution, pollution. So the driving cause, causes of um, the short water crisis, shortage in water, is going to be deforestation, industrialization, where we have this mass, uh, this big consumption of water, pollution, and can I tell you, over harvesting. Um, in Kingston, Jamaica, um, our water company in the, in the country, they extract water from wells. And when you do over-harvesting of the water from the well, when you pull too much water from the well, it reduces the water in the well. And what ends up happening is that you have what is called saltwater intrusion. Because you would agree with me, the water being in that aquifer, 
that underground natural well or underground natural basin, the water being in the aquifer, 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 the water being in that aquifer, what would happen is that it would exert some amount of force um, holding up the land, one, and of course keeping out the seawater. But as soon as we remove that water, then the seawater starts to come in and we start ending up with what we call salt water intrusion. So what happens is that when you continue to pump this water, what you're pumping is actually salt water, which is, of course, coming from the sea into these aquifer. So over-harvesting also lead to this problem. One thing about over-harvesting is that with with uh, the aquifers, they sometimes take years, hundreds of years to fill with water. But of course, with this increased population, or this population that continue to bloom, um, we are pulling more water than these aquifers can uh, take in, or faster than the aquifer will, of course, be refilled. So we talk about industrialization where water is using to cool, um, like in the steel production, iron production, uh, power generation, sug um, our, um, sugar manufacturing. Uh, water is used to wash a lot of things in the food manufacturing uh, process. And in some cases, this water is not um, used. When we talk about bauxite, I know that they have the water that moves off into the settling, what we call settling pond or tailing ponds. I don't know if the water is reused, but one of the things that we probably could do is to reuse some of this water where it can be reused. I know that in hotels, a lot of hotels, they tend to treat the sewage water. And remember that gray water is considered to be sewage water. Sewage water is not only feces. The water from the kitchen is gray water. The water from the bathroom is gray water. All that is gray water. So, and what I know hotels do, they tend to treat this gray water and they tend to use it for irrigation. So you might go to the, or, to the hotel and you realize that even when it is raining, they are still watering the plants because they have the gray water and they are actually recycling. Then we have pollution. You know pollution, sedimentation. Uh, you know the, the pesticide that we use. You know the oil leaks and all of these stuff. The mercury and the lead entering the water. It was just this morning I was watching the, the U.S. news and I think they are charging some government person for moving water from a particular river through um, the water system. And the water had lead and caused the death of some persons and caused the lesion and skin of some persons and so on. So, of course, yesterday, um, Tanisha was saying, um, boil the water and filter the water and all of that. And we said that, yeah, you can do that with some water. But some water out there, you have to just leave it alone. Don't trouble it. Because if you trouble it, you might be troubling a casket. And then we, of course, we touched over harvesting already. We spoke about aquifer, saltwater intrusion. And when we remove that water from the aquifer, I did not touch this, we end up with a condition called land subsidence, not landslide. Landslide that way, but land subsidence, the land fall this way. So the hydrostatic forces keeping up the land, we move the water, the force is not there anymore, so the land fall. As in the case with St. Mary, we have a lot of landfall, so we call it land subsidence. Then water with the high nutrient content, we have eutrophication. And I asked you yesterday to look at a, a video with the end of Mississippi, and you will see that and we spoke about red tide with the algae bloom and eutrophication. So we touch a lot of things. Some of it is environmental science, but if we're teaching ecology, we're not going to keep the knowledge to ourselves. We're going to give you the knowledge and make you run the road. Who knows? Probably you might become an environmentalist. I don't know. So I have to ensure that I give you all that you need to go where you want to go. But how do we correct this water shortage? The water shortage can be corrected. Or in some cases, we can... I remember when we talk about water. Well, we talk about eutrophication. Remember, we spoke about the Ariel Sea yesterday. It's bigger than biology, but I give you enough things that you can write on the paper was so nice. We spoke about the Ariel Sea, where they draw the water for agriculture. We spoke about... We, sp uh, we spoke about uh, the minimata with the mercury poison in the water. And I don't know if you know that there's a big conflict now with some pipeline that they are running um, in the River Nile. So they are taking some water from the River Nile upstream and those persons downstream are saying, hey, you can't do that. 
When you move the water upstream, what is going to happen to us downstream? We are relying on this water downstream. So when you divert that water, not because it passed up where you are, the water belongs to us as well. So that is also a problem. You have the politics around water. Some persons want to live. Water is going to be the new goal, you know? Because uh, the oil reserves will go, the oil reserves will go. So persons are going to now be looking at water, clean, safe water to drink is going to be that big deal. I remember when I was a little boy, there was no bottled water. When I came from the country down to Kingston, I'd go to the Sky Juice man with a cart and you just put some shave ice in a bag and with a sting like that, pump some water in it and you buy a water. Now you go everywhere, water has been sold. I didn't know as a little boy that water would be sold in a bottle. I didn't even know that water could be sold unless it's coming like from the water company in your pipe. I didn't know water could be bottled and sold, but here we are. That's what it is now. So we could correct this water shortage. Um, how? Give me some in the chat. And like I said, that we are wrapping up. I didn't want to push more than an hour, but we're going to go about an hour and 20, 25 minutes. All right, to prevent water pollution. So um, it's important to note that it's about 90% of earth water is salt water. About 90%. So in some cases where we don't have any um, rivers and sea, the first thing we'll have to think about is desalination. Now, desalination is where we are using machine, our, yes, technology, to take the seawater and remove the salt from it and use it. I was told that they do some of that in Cuba. I don't know. And at one point when we were having problem in Jamaica, they were considering setting up some desalination plant in Ferry where they could pull the seawater and, of course, remove the salt. Uh, what do we have here? More. In the case of overpopulation, family planning should be taken into consideration. Fines for littering uh, being, being raised. All right. Uh, you see, sometimes fine is a very tricky thing. It's when it comes to prisoner fine, it's a very tricky thing. Because there's a lot of country that you have hanging taking place and persons are still committing murder. So it is said sometimes that it is better that we sort of uh, uh, try to keep persons out of prison. You can make them pay. It is sometimes a little more, it's harsher having them pay and educate persons. But I personally don't like the prison idea for anything at all, right? Um, probably for murder. You have to see the person commit the murder. And of course, I don't think you should stay there forever. All right? So um, the views are going to be different. My views don't have to be yours, you know? But I am one of those advocate for life. Uh, of course, I could say other things, but let that stay. All right. Uh, so we could have desalination plant, and that will, of course, help with the water. Of course, we need to reduce pollution of our rivers, lake, uh, sea, etc. Uh, we need to reduce pollution. We need to turn off the pipe. You're not using the water? Turn off the top. Right? If you're brushing your teeth, turn off the pipe or get the water in a container. Um, you need to fix leaks. If you have a pipe leaking at home or the pipe leaking in the road, uh, make sure you fix it that we can conserve water. Reduce the time that you spend in the shower. Yeah, I know that the time is hot and you went into bed, but uh, reduce the time for shower. Conservation. Smarter agriculture. I use smarter agriculture. Instead of having this whole lot of water, practice some mulching agriculture. You could use organic or synthetic mold. The agriculture student will tell you what, uh, what, what, what is it that we're referring to as mulch. Uh, use bucket. If you're washing the car, use a bucket to wash the car and not a hose. And of course, remember to recycle and of course, reuse. Our next topic is going to be pollution. And this evening, we are not going to touch all the pollution. I'm just going to be touching a little bit on land pollution. When it comes to air pollution, that is the big one because that have a whole lot of chemistry in it and so on. So I'm, this evening, I'm going to be looking at uh, land pollution. There's not much to do on land pollution. Everybody knows land pollution. You see the garbage everywhere. You see the oil spill. You have seen the insecticide, the pesticide, whatever being used in agriculture. But the big word here is buy less bottled water. <laughs> That's a new one. Um, pollution. Pollution is, of course, the introduction of contaminants to land, water, or the air. I don't like to use the word substance because I don't know if I could call a box drink box or a plastic box a substance, but we talk about pollutant, that which is causing the pollution. 
So pollution is pretty much the introduction of pollutant or introduction of contaminant to land, water, or air. Now, it's very important to note that there are two real sources of pollution. And get this tonight. There are two real sources of pollution. There is what we call point source pollution. And we talk about point source pollution. We know exactly where the pollution is coming from. The pollution is coming from over the factory. That is the factory that is responsible for the fish kill. Non-point source. The pollution is here, but we're not too sure where it is coming from. Right? The pollution came down the river. We're not too sure whose farm it is coming from. We just don't know. The pollution is here. And we don't, we're not too sure where it is coming from. That could be like, uh, think about like acid rain or uh, any air pollutant. It could have been there and over time it accumulates. And you don't, you're not too sure who you are supposed to blame for it. So you have point source pollution, non-point source pollution. And of course, you could do some more reading on that. Now, pollution is usually a major problem when we look at things that are non-biodegradable. If they are non-biodegradable, they are, of course, in most cases, if not managed in the environment, they are going to be pollutant. Or they are going to cause pollution. And some of these include like the great mercury that cause, of course, the mercury poisoning with the minimata disease. You could think about the lead. There's somewhere in Papine, somewhere in the university region where the area was used as a garage and then there was a school and they had to pave that entire area because lead, you know, lead damage your brain and all of that. And if you get mercury poison, you start to shift on, move in a circle and thing like that. Uh, plastic, most plastic are not biodegradable and they too cause a whole lot of problem uh, for a lot of organisms, and they are also on site. Um, cyanide, poison, and so on, whatever the poison are, you would have learned about the love canal yesterday where we had this toxic thing buried under the ground. Those persons were like really, really uh, wicked. Sell the land, I think they sold the land for $1 because I know the land had no value, and I don't know if they told the person what was the problem with the area. So those are some of the problems we, we have with land. And you can think about the many pollutants that we have because we spoke about some yesterday. We said some of the concerns that we have there are with plastic, metal, fabric, chemical, glass, and we list some of the major things that we are having problems with. Now, there are also some toxic chemicals that serve as pollutants. And we would have remembered a long time ago, we spoke about DDT when I spoke about bioaccumulation. We're not using DDT in Jamaica anymore because of its high residual effect. But there are some chemical, for example, think about plutonium, PT, that comes from the manufacturing of car. You remember sometimes they wanted some ship to sail through the Caribbean with PT, and the Caribbean was saying, hell no. If I drip up that plutonium drop in the water in the Caribbean, we are no more. Right, so you have some really, really toxic stuff that, um, of course, uh, they cause pollution, as it were, for the love canal. Now, when we have these toxic chemicals causing pollution, some in most cases they will poison organisms. They might lead to mutation. They might lead to mutation, and I like to talk about mutation as that phobia phenomena phenomena as it were in Jamaica. If you are in Jamaica and the baby is disfigured or an animal is disfigured or a plant is disfigured, there's just one thing that comes to mind or the first thing that comes to mind is obey them, obey that is because she never did a live right or because she did trouble this a person person or because her father did this or her mother did this or her auntie did this nephew or niece. And then also we have this chemical runoff that leads also to eutrophication. Now, that brings us to the end of the lesson for today. That is all I had planned for today. But as it relates to land pollution, how can we solve the problem around land pollution? Now, one of the things that we could do is to use renewable material. And where they are not renewable, we are going to use biodegradable material. And where biodegradable is being used, we want to also practice the reduce, reuse, and of course, recycle. 
all right? Try to use environmentally friendly uh, chemicals. Uh, for example, uh, I, there are like BT, chemicals that you can use in, in agriculture that are biological pesticide. Try to go for those rather than the real toxic ones. Try to use a uh, biological com control. We have to know pioneer that cause in agriculture for pest control that we call IPM, Integrated Pest Management, where the use of synthetic chemical is the last resort. So we have to pioneer things like those using IPM in agriculture, Integrated Pest Management, where we look at the use of synthetic chemical, these toxic things, as last resort that takes the curtain down for this evening uh i think we have covered a whole lot i suggest to you that you go over the videos listen to the videos again tick off check off and remember go and watch the past papers remember you need to do a minimum of five past papers and I will settle for a max of 10, but you could go more. You want to start practicing the paper by listening to the person who is explaining the paper and get a good understanding. And then as you master that paper, you try to see if you could do that paper. And then you try to do a paper that the person did not explain. You try to do it by yourself and see if you are meeting the timing. Make sure that you are not making mistakes. You don't want to see a question and you read it. And when you should say X, you say Y, right? You want to ensure that you are practicing. One of the good ways to practice is to teach somebody. So if you can find someone to study with that you can teach, that will help. That will help. I was hoping to see more persons from across the diaspora. I was hoping to see more Jamaican. But I don't know. It will come with time. I am going to be here. Um, I think the Bible is saying where one or two are gathered he will be in the blessed to, he will be in the middle to bless and whatever else now we have more than one and two here so i can almost be certain that he will be here because we have surpassed that which he made mention of it is always my pleasure being here with you i try to be on time as much as possible if i'm not going to be here i will leave a message in the discussion on my channel as promised yesterday, we did release that video uh, this morning on uh, what's an enzyme and how enzyme work. Uh, a number of persons reached out to us and said that they liked the video. We tried to make, we made it very simple and we gave it that Caribbean flavor uh, pretty much. Uh, it's at the Caribbean speed because we tend to speak much slower than the European. And the explanation is as you would have wanted. As you would have wanted, the, the video is less than four minutes, and we are going to hopefully we'll be able to put out the other video tomorrow that is on, of course, the properties of an enzyme. We want to show you that we might have to do. It might take a little more time because, of course, when we look at enzymes are in nature by high temperature. I'd love if I could give you an animation to show you that or something like that. And of course, there are some graph to put in and so on. But it is going good so far, and I love it. I do appreciate that you continue to support us. You continue to be with us when we have the live. You continue to reach out to your friends. We are having persons who are subscribing every day. So we are of the opinion that we are doing something that a lot of persons like. We are hoping that more persons will like it. And as you share and tell persons about the good news, about the story, the family will grow you will learn i said to some students in jamaica today join the live it's a caribbean community and contrary to what you would have heard on the radio that this country and that country uh, they are having a fight in this classroom everybody is pretty much one person share the resource that they have i said to persons if you want something come to the room and ask for it they will send it to my email address but i really don't want persons to be asking anyone for their for their numbers on this channel I really don't want that because a person's um, security, safety is very, very important to me. And you might not know, but there are even grade seven students on this channel. And I really don't want anything get out of hand from my channel. I'm a stickler for a lot of things. So um, we won't do that. Um, as soon as we get very, very close to the, to the exam, I did promise that we will have probably a Zoom session where we can meet and greet and everybody can see everybody. Persons want to see who is Otisha, 
who is Mr. Wilson, who is um, Jazel Gracie, who is Jawarwan, who is uh, Macmillan. Um, that time we'll meet and, of course, everybody will see us and have a better understanding what 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 what's life is like. Oh, what did I do today? I went to the airport in Jamaica today. Sir, grade seven is what class or level? All right, grade seven in Jamaica is about grade. It's about between age eleven and thirteen. A marathon. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what's a marathon. I've heard a lot of things about a marathon. I'm not too sure about that. I don't want to make those big promises because in Jamaica, when we have marathon, what happens is that persons go on, go to school and they stay there overnight. I don't know if you want to explain to me. Probably send me an email and explain that marathon thing and then we can look at it. We did say that we're working on a number of past papers, so I'm not too sure. Jawawan, um, what grade are you in? Uh, oh, grade seven is first form in Jamaica. It's between age 11 and 13. Age 11 and 13, not class. Age 11 and 13. You could send me. So I did send my email address just now. If there's resource that you want to share with the family, feel free to do so. But I'd prefer you not to share your number. Or even, I don't want you to even share your email address with anyone because the security of this room is very, very important and we are not going to spoil the flavor. I don't know everyone. In a matter of fact, I don't know persons on the group. Usually I say to persons, join, I don't need to know your name. So please do not share your email address in, in this chat. Please do not share your, your telephone number in this chat. If you need to reach out to the group, just go to the channel email address, which is monitored by YouTube and the Google. So any anky panky, they will pick it up, right? So I am not in that type of a thing. So I'm very, very, I was telling you earlier that this evening, I, this morning, I went on the road and I did a little video taping. I was driving and taping uh, just to show you a little bit of Jamaica. A Jamaica nice, Jamaica nice, Jamaica nice. I went by the airport and there's this nice little road and there's this, uh, I mean, industrialization coming from the airport and you look to the left, you are seeing like everything that we're teaching now. You are seeing the cement factory, you are seeing the flour mill, you are seeing these cargo vessels in the harbor, you are seeing downtown Kingston, where um, that is, of, of course, the center of commerce. You are seeing the National Stadium. You are seeing Sabina Park, which is the cricket area. You are seeing the Beverly Hills. And it's a nice little scenery. And I did video that bit for you uh, to show you on the channel. I was going to upload it with some sound. And then there's another side of the road that they had to do sadding. And sadding is sort of a conservation method where they pack some big stone so that they, um, the sea doesn't come across the road. Uh, every time the weather gets really, really bad, the sea tend to come across and no one can go to the airport. So I did a little of that. And I, I'm going to be doing a little shot with Jamaica every now and then and show you. You would have seen the video that I showed you, Jamaica's first triple deck deep bridge. It's the only one in the island. It's this big bridge. It's Jamaica's busiest intersection. And I'm going to be showing you Jamaica's busiest road. We have a corridor in Jamaica that more traffic travel on that road than any other road in the island. And of course, I would have shown you a Christmas tree in St. Thomas. It is the only parish in Jamaica that does not have a stoplight. So it is a really green and natural parish. Um, they don't enjoy the luxury of air pollution as we would have in Kingston because there's no real industry over there. Persons really practice very simple agriculture. And of course, not, a, not many motor vehicles over there. As I said, there is no stoplight over there. So if you are a lover of nature, if you are a naturalist, St. Thomas is going to be the area for you. And that is the place that I grew up. That's the place that I went to school. Uh, but I tend to like the fast lane, so I'm in the city. Uh, but of course, uh, I love nature. I love nature. Any day, um, if you ask me to go to a football match, or go to uh, uh, the, the hills, I would tell you that I'm going to the hills, um, not to the football match, because the hills is going to be cool and nice, and you're going to be seeing organisms of all sorts of, of all types, and that's going to be me. I think I really like that, and I do a little exercise and so on uh, from time to time. But uh, COVID is here. There's a lot of things happening on this, um, in the news. Uh, there's a new strain of COVID. We're not too sure. I agree with Amoy, what Amoy said. Amoy, well, 
well, can we get a class just for past papers? Okay, um, cool, that's fine. Um, the thing about the class for past paper, let me tell you, I am going to be using OBS. Have you ever looked at my past paper, um, Jarawan? Have you ever looked at my past paper? Marathon similar to a crash course where past paper are done for long hours. That is what you want. Adi is saying that past papers are done for long hours. That's what you want? Uh, but somebody said they agree with some. Somebody said they agree with Amoy. What did Amoy say? Where is Amoy? Amoy. What about them? Oh, Amoy is the Amoy asks about marathon. All right. Add it plus. Add it plus. Um, um, Amoy is asking about marathon. Amoy is doing HSB. Um, Yes, I'm saying that Amoy had asked about a uh, marathon. Um, I don't know what is going to happen. Uh, probably we asked the school for permission in Jamaica to have those, those marathon. I'm not too sure what will happen. Um, as it were, for online, um, of course, we can work out something. We'll do some past paper. The thing about it, when I'm using OBS, there's a log in the OBS. So I am here and I'm talking. You can't, I can't hear you. There's a log in the OBS. I have to look at that. Like, no, I'm talking. I'm seeing you. You're seeing me real time. In OBS, there's a delay. So when I talk, um, it's long before you get that information. And it starts to create a little problem. And that is why we are not streaming in OBS. We stream here uh, for broad broadcasting. Yes, we use OBS for broadcasting. So if you see the past papers playing online, like in the morning or in the midday, or you see any of my videos playing online like a live, and you don't see my face on the screen, and you see like a picture of, see the videos online, um, I'm using a different software to stream. Yeah, I use OBS to stream. But I use YouTube Studio to have the live, because streaming, if I was supposed to stream on OBS and not talk to you, or not, not getting the feedback in the chat from you, that would be fine. But if I'm going to be using OBS and talk to you, there's going to be a delay and you waiting on me, me waiting on you. And that can be a little distracting at times. Right? So it is Friday evening and it's a COVID evening. I want you to just go over the video now. Uh, we, we would have go two hours, two and a half hour. I let you off early on a Friday and I'll try as much as possible to start to prepare the lesson. So last year, last year I would come and I would just teach from my brain. This year I come and I prepare the lesson so that I can go topic by topic, editing by editing, so that when you watch the video, you will see what editing I'm doing. And of course you can follow on your syllabus. And that's how it's going to be. We're hoping that we could have done it on, on OBS, but that wasn't working out. We tried and you saw we start getting kicking off in the early part, so we're not doing that. We'll talk more about Martin as we get close, closer to the thing and how we can work that out. Remember, if you have past paper, or if you see anybody who want to sponsor us, we would greatly appreciate that. The little funding would go a far away. We probably could get some new. I need to get myself a new camera. Uh, so if you have anybody, publisher, I was told about a publisher in Trinidad and Tobago. If there's any publishing house that write textbook for biology and they want us to review the book or they want us to promote the book, well, we're not going to promote the book, but we're not review. Um, I have my integrity, so I'm not going to tell it to buy something that doesn't make sense, right? Because I read bio books from the start to the finish. You know? So when I go to class, I can tell my student on page that there's an error. This is what it should have been. And even the syllabus some sometimes have error. So if you know anyone, and um, I'd ask you to tell your teachers and your classmates uh, to join us here. I'd love to have them. I'd like to know persons before we start teaching. Because even temperament, we have to understand to get into the exam. You don't want to get over there uh, to start doing past papers and all of that. And persons don't understand my diction. Persons don't understand uh, my humor. Persons don't understand anything about me. And then we have a fuss or a quarrel. We don't want to want persons to settle in 
and I know that, oh, Mr. Wilson, it's a cool guy or he's whatever guy and you can make a decision from there. But like I said, it is always my pleasure having you. I am going to take my leave now. I'll try to get something to eat and see if I can prepare some videos because I've been a naughty boy since about December. I've been doing much videos. All right. Thanks much for watching. Please be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Be safe now for the weekend. Please be safe. All right. Good. So we put out the video this morning, like we said, on Enzyme, you can go and watch it. And remember, go into the channel and look for the video that you want. I, I encourage everybody to get a syllabus. Most of the HSB persons who think that may short change them, get a video. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. And it's not night. It's evening. I am a teacher, so I'm always going to be teaching. Night is when you're going to your bed. Remember, we have to understand some protocol. Remember, I spent some time with a JDF, so protocol means a lot. So if you're leaving me at this time, though it is dark, it is not night, it is evening. Good night, you say good night when you're going to bed. So when you're going into the, your bed, you say good night. Other than that, you say good evening. All right? Remember, good evening. Right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's not night. Night is when you're going to your bed. All right, good. Big up on yourself. Bless up. Later. Remember to like, share, subscribe, tell somebody, go and watch the video, forward the video to somebody that somebody else can learn from the video. All right? The videos are online. I I allow them to stay there. Bless up. My God. Oh, no, I go to bed. Oh, what I say? Uh, why may not even know what I'm going to do now? Probably may I go watch two movies. Probably may I go play with an eye. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to feel hungry. I'm going to if I get white. I'm going to see if I can get some water to drink first and things like that. You know, I'm going to see if I can weaken it out. And then, me know so all am I have me up on fire stick. We say she shall look out. By Monday, she'll look out for past paper. So, I have all of them stuff to work on. Um, I'm going to see if we can work on a past paper and shut it off by... By... Um, I don't, I, we're going to have a pass paper out for, for HSB. And we're going to try as much as possible to send out a new pass paper for bio. And we, uh, like I said, we had about three questions on those paper to send out, uh, but we'll be able to send out paper. So don't, don't worry yourself. What I'm worried about is that you guys are not practicing and some of you are not studying. I remember once me are teaching a final, we can't work for free, I want to get one. All right? Bless up, my God.